Council candidates, please come up. Regarding the um, voters' guide, we did not include pros and cons for the charter amendments because the county was putting together a brochure. And as I said before, the, there are copies of the brochure in the ante room, and it's going to be sent mailed out to all the residents. Okay, we're going to follow the ballot order. We we'll begin with the two-minute statements. So we we'll begin with the chief. Good evening. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for holding this event. I'm Pete Sheen. I've lived and worked here since 1986 after serving in the Air Force and going back to school during a PhD in physics at UCLA. I've had a satisfying career in X Division at the lab, retiring this April. I'm still a guest scientist, but I'm happy to have more time to devote to my family and community. I've, I've been active in community affairs as a serving on the Planning and Zoning Commission since 2008. I think I've shown the judgment, patience, stamina, and good humor necessary to make a good county councilor for this town. When I ask people what they think about the county government, they tell me they're concerned about the aggressive and some say extravagant spending being done by the county. At the same time, they want the county to go ahead with needed investments in education, infrastructure, and economic development. Things that will help make our town more inviting to everyone. From single people, to families with children, to retired people. I've been all of those things in my time here. I think I can help find a balance between these concerns. I'm ready to take the time to look carefully at every detail of what we spend and give credit, put everything on the table, give credit where we're doing things well, such as Atomic City Transit, and fix the things we're not doing so well, such as getting way too far into final design of the building projects before we ask the contractor what those things are going to cost. It always seems it's more than we had estimated. People are in pretty good agreement about priorities public safety, infrastructure, education, and economic development, followed by improving our recreational amenities. If we focus on communication, prioritization, and fiscal responsibility, we will be able to afford all the important things for our community. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michael Redondo. First, I'd like to uh, thank the League of Women Voters and uh, all of you for uh, coming. Um, I grew up in this community. I moved here at the age of three in 1983. Um, this is my home. And I really want to make sure that um, it's a community that thrives and, and prospers. Um, I did leave the community several times. I left to earn my uh, bachelor's degrees. Um, also to spend time serving as a volunteer in the Peace Corps in the Environmental Conservation Program in the Republic of Panama. Um, and most recently to earn my master's degree in community and regional planning. I think my planning degree is something that I can most particularly use to help this community. Um, one of the things that I think most important to me is the ability for young people like myself to be able to uh, come back to town and earn a living, um, and not necessarily work in the lab. This is something that I've tried to do. I've found it fairly difficult. I'm managing to do it, but it's not easy. Um, I also want this place to be a community where people like myself want to stay. People who grew up here often leave, and they very seldom come back. Um, and I think that's a shame, because you know, we're, we're losing an important part of our community. Um, and I really think that we need to work to make this the sort of place where people like that can stay um, and want to stay. And, and I think one of the things that I can do um, is leverage my planning degree, leverage my knowledge of, of planning to help us update our, our zoning codes, in particular um, 
They were written in 1968 and, and haven't really been updated substantially since then. Um, and that's something that I would really like to, to push um, is elected to the council so that we can uh, make this a, a community for everyone, um, not just uh, a select few. Thank you. My name is Kristen Emerson, and I am running for one of the three seats on County Council. We have lived here nine years. My husband works at the lab, and I have two girls in elementary school that were both born here. Um, I have a law degree from UCLA, and I have both practiced law, and I have also worked in a lot of um, software startups. Currently here, for the last seven years, I have been an agent at Remax, which I think is a great background because I know all of our neighborhoods and I know a lot of our housing issues, of which they're plentiful. Um, but one of the most important things I have done here, frankly, is be a stay-at-home mom for several years. And probably half of you are thinking, what? And half of you are like, okay, I understand. <laughs> and and I really think that is an important background to bring to this council because it's it's unfortunate, but the truth is we are losing our families in their 20s, 30s, and 40s at a higher rate than the rest of the state. So one of the other things I've been involved in here is I got very involved in Trinity Site and I spent as a citizen volunteer and I went and met with a lot of playgroups. I didn't find all of them, but I found a lot of them and I talked about what Trinity Site was because that's an important issue to them. And I told them about it, but I heard from them a lot about how they felt about the town. And really in the end, that's why I decided to run because I think there's a lot of us who feel the same way. We would like to see some progress, but we think all of us need to be included. And unfortunately, I think the families in particular, one, feel like the town's not meeting their needs, but two, they don't care that it's not meeting their needs. And I don't think that's how we all feel. Um, in the end, I believe that this is a great town, and it could be even better, but we do need to take into account all of us as we move forward and as we make these important decisions. Of course, we have to be fiscally responsible about it, and that's the kind of town we are, and absolutely that's what we need to be. But we do need to think of all of us as we move forward. So I hope you vote for me November 6th. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Let me start off by saying what a great looking bunch. Thanks for all being here today. Thanks for having, letting us talk to you guys today. My name is Mark Clay. I'm a long-time resident of Los Alamos, 30 years, half of it in White Rock, half of it in Los Alamos. Uh, and uh, I have raised a bunch of children here, still am. Uh, I've been in, uh, had kids in every school in the community. Uh, so I have a real good practical understanding of the issues on a day-to-day -day living kind of a basis. I'm also a veteran through leadership Los Alamos and leadership New Mexico of understanding the issues from a management and leadership perspective. Uh, I've been part of that program leadership Los Alamos for eight years uh, and have been working with the staff of that to try to help build leaders of tomorrow, some of which are in this room and are all around the county. So now it's my turn to help. Instead of being behind the scenes and helping to provide leadership opportunities for other people, it's for me to take and do what I practiced. Uh, I've also been a manager of the laboratory for some 10 years and I'm more than a manager, I'm a leader. So that's something that you'll have in me. It's more than just a person who can manage the county affairs as part of the council, but who can be a leader, who can set vision and, and make those things happen that we always want to do but don't seem to be able to do in some cases. Uh, so I, I really look forward to your vote on, uh, on November 6th because that's the kind of person you want. You want a person with a combination of practical experience, leadership experience, and also the last thing I'll comment on is uh, I'm a person that does everything from a basis of very strong core values. You'll have a person in me who will base their decisions on, on integrity, on, on trust, and on, on all those things that we hold dear that you would want a person to have as a backbone for what they decide to do. Because I'm representing all of you, and that's why I hope you'll vote for me. Thank you very much. I'm Vincent Sherabelli. And I was humbled and honored four years ago to be elected to the Los Alamos County Council. I'm running for re-election to be a common sense, fiscally conservative voice on the council. I believe that the most important job of an elected official is to look carefully and critically at public spending. 
And I feel that lavish spending on government buildings, such as the municipal building and the Justice Center, has not addressed the most critical need that our community faces, and as a which is to attract more young families to live here. And as a county councilor, I have a strong record of opposing excessive spending and demanding that we make every dollar of our public money count. My priorities include helping start up uh, technology companies with county financial assistance so that we can create more jobs here in Los Alamos County and expand our research park and the Entrada Business Park. I'm a champion of our public schools, which are the jewel of our community. And I feel that the county has to take a leading role in identifying new revenue sources for our public schools. And that's why, as county councilor, I introduced an ordinance so that our schools would get 100% of the least money uh, from the commercial activity on the Trinity site. I feel that we have to develop the 60-acre A19 parcel in White Rock so that new housing and retail <laughs> options can be created for our citizens through private enterprise. By working together, we can create a county government that listens to its citizens and lives within its means. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Stephen Gearins, and I'm running for County Council. I have had the privilege of living in this community, this county, specifically White Rock, for 33 years, and now it's my time, my opportunity to stand up and volunteer to serve. I've been touched, influenced by a distinguished cadre of citizens who have served this community and delivered significant accomplishments, all contributing to the idea of no better place than Los Alamos to work raise a family, be proud of, and most importantly, live. I emphasize service because that's what it's all about. My motto is, don't yak, give back. These past three decades, I have not sat on the sidelines. In the 80s, I served on the Parks and Rec Board. In the 90s, I served on PNZ. During the 2000s, I was elected to the school board. In all cases, I was involved in local government. A precept I was trained growing up, and one that has always been important to me, is living within your means. So living within our means as a county will always be an important consideration for me. My priorities, an advocate for balanced community investments, especially infrastructure revitalization. A proponent of the county's established economic vitality priorities. A supporter of the positive momentum promoting regional relationships and collaborations, and a voice for mutually beneficial collaboration with the schools. I am committed to sustaining the quality of life we enjoy, a safe place to live, quality schools, unique recreational and cultural venues, and a no better place to raise a family. I will be decisive to progress effective government. I will look for and champion practical solutions that responsibly serve to balance our community's expectations for services with available revenues. So most sincerely, I am asking for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, the first question is from the League. And we'll begin with Mr. Gearns. The development contract for Trinity Site has been transferred from NADG to Smith's. What is your reaction to this change? I think this is a positive thing. Um, I, I believe the anchor, having the anchor tenant is so important. And Smith's, we've, Kruger's, we knew was going to be the anchor tenant here. Uh, we've known for a long time, no one else is coming. We don't have enough rooftops. So uh, we're even too small to have competing uh, groceries. So let's let them go for it. They even said, um, they're not in the development business, but when they have to, they'll do it. So, six months, eight months, let's go. Just gonna go down. I agree, I supported the Trinity site development when it first came up, and I still do today. We tried to get some competition for Smiths. 
at this time, they're the only organization with the financial power and knowledge of the market they have here, which I think they know they have a gold mine, to make an investment. We've made a big investment to make that site ready. It's time for us to get some payoff. They're going to put a lot of money into that. It's going to help uh, the young families. It's got to send revenue to the schools and property tax and increase GRT to the county. So, would we have liked something else? Maybe. What we've got is this, and let's take it and go forward. I voted uh, for the transfer from NADG to Smith's because I feel that this is a positive development that will lead to breaking dirt finally on the Trinity site. I don't think there can be any doubt in the, the minds of the county council or anyone in the community that there's been a desire for more retail in this town, especially among our young moms and our young families. And we need to address that need. It's taken far longer than any of us thought to bring this project about, but I'm committed to seeing it through. And I think that working with Smiths, who has a proven record of dealing with local businesses and renting to local businesses, is very good because Smiths will be willing to give our local businesses a shot to be present on the Trinity site. And for me, that's very important, and that's one of the reasons why I voted for it. Please, could people please stand when they sure. respond? We can't see you from back here. Thank you. Sure, absolutely. I'm in favor of the Trinity site transfer to any to um, Smiths. Uh, the reason I'm in favor is there's many reasons. But one, Smiths has a different business model. NADG really had to make their money from the junior sites, and Smiths doesn't have to do that. They know they're going to be making their money on the $25 million they're investing to build it overall and mostly on their general merchandise and grocery store. So they're still committed to bringing in those junior tenants, but they don't have to get as high of a rent. And there are people interested, they just weren't willing to pay the kind of rent that NADG wanted. I'm not worried about them controlling both sites. I mean, I think really big picture, we haven't had general merchandise here for either 20 or 30 years. I'm not sure that is before my time. And I think it's kind of scary. What is it going to do to everybody? But I really truly believe it will help us stop our 80% leakage off the hill. Even if we spend 40% of our money up here, that's going to help our local merchandise. And it's absolutely going to help our lifestyle. And it's going to help the lab be able to recruit and economic development to expand. And thank you. I'm in favor. I'm also in favor. Uh, Smith's uh, is the only organization that had the courage to move forward. Of course, they're strongly motivated because they make a lot of money on groceries. They, they, they certainly understand two of the retail gaps that we have, gas and groceries. Uh, and let's see if they are going to be willing to fill some of the other retail gaps with some of the other stores around it. And I think they will be. Uh, it, it saddened me today, some of you read, when Ottawa Station is going to be closing. So if, if, if we can have uh, something like Smith's attract things and attract people to come here. Uh, let's start there. I mean, we have to start somewhere. Uh, and as Steve said earlier, we need to move. So instead of thinking about it and talking about it, it'll just lay fallow forever. So I'm, I'm all in favor of doing it. I'm, I'm, in, I'm looking forward to what the other communities or uh, the other retail is going to be. Uh, and I think it'll be something. And I think it'll be fun. And it'll be exciting. And it'll be the beginning of moving forward uh, for economic development in Los Alamos. Like the rest of our candidates here, I am in favor of, of the project. Um, considering especially the fact that once we do get a tenant in there, um, the rent, a uh, large portion of it will be going to the schools uh, for to cover operating costs. And that's something that, uh, personally to me, is very important. Um, having gone through the local school system, um, it's a jewel of our community, and anything we can do to um, bring more money to them so that they can continue their wonderful um, and amazing work that they do for our youth is, is something I've been supporting. Questions from the floor? Um, Steve, you have a mic. Hi, I'm glad you're all here. Um, I believe that a vibrant, 
retail community in Los Alamos is impossible as long as the laboratory is renting space downtown. I'd just like to hear your views on that. I agree. <laughs> yes, I agree. Um, I think that uh, having high rents uh, in our downtown area has been cr a crushing blow for small businesses that are trying to get started. I would like to see new facilities built on the South Mesa so that um, the laboratory can concentrate its activities there, uh, such as a, a science complex, where the laboratory would have some of its employees, we could have private companies and university presence, and all of that, those new facilities, would be done on the land on the South Mesa. Uh, and, and to help our small businesses, the new lands that we currently own, the 60-acre A19 site in White Rock, land on DP Road, land that is in, on the municipal building site, we could use, the county could use that land and lease it or sell it to small businesses so they have a shot to upgrade and improve their business. And that's what I'd like to see happen. I, I told what you said um, directly to Charlie McMillan recently. Uh, he even answers his door. I've knocked on a lot of doors uh, and had some interesting things to say. He told me, relax. Uh, one of the silver linings of the, the recent budget cuts is the, at the lab is that they need less space and they are pulling back. Uh, <laughs> contractors, it hurts. Some of these contractors are laying people off, but they don't need that space. The county as well, uh, once the municipal building is done, is going to pull a lot of people out of that downtown space and there will be vacancy. That is an opportunity. It's up to those landlords to, to cut their prices if they so choose. If not, we will have to move out to the edges of town. That's what the food co-op did. Got a, a reasonable deal from our now councilor Rick Reese. And there is a need. It will be met. Uh, right now, there's 100,000 square feet of empty space in town. So I don't know if that's necessarily one of the big drivers when we just have one of our uh, favorite little businesses, the Ottawa Station, go under. Um, I think it's a, it's a, a lot of it, a vibrancy, is a function of having a major anchor tenant here to stop the leakage. So uh, I think the Smith store, a bigger Smith store with, with more general merchandise is, would be that anchor. Um, unfortunately, it takes an act of Congress for the lab to build uh, a new office space on the south side of the, the bridge. Um, personally, I think you know the high rents, the competition with the lab is a contributing factor to our, our economic issues. Um, I think there are things that we can do through zoning to incentivize um, our landlords um, and incentivize development that can potentially offer lower rents. Um, and that's something I would like to look at. Um, we need to get creative with the ways that we support our local businesses. Um, and that's something that I am really committed to doing. I shall say I'm glad to see you too. Uh, the, uh, the lab is pulling back. Uh, it is going to be doing a lot of work along the quarter, the part of the quarter. It's got the, the new complex can be around the, uh, the NSSB, so there's going to be a lot of focus there. Steve's right, there's a lot of empty space in Los Alamos. I think there's a lot of empty space at White Rock already. Los Alamos isn't in those spaces right now, the laboratory. So how do we offer incentives to get the owners of some of the existing spaces to spruce them up so people want to take over? I mean, if you talk to Denise, you'll notice that some of our retail space isn't exactly the most beautiful and most desirable there is. So. So it's going to take some county effort to encourage people to come through the incentives we can offer. Uh, so you're right, Los Alamos Laboratory did contribute to where we are, but you know they, they, just, they just paid what the landlords wanted them to pay. So now they're coming back, so I think the supply and demand will, will ultimately adjust what's going on there. But, but I see a future in the spaces here now, so we can use it. I think we all agree that it's not good for a vibrant downtown to have to have an office space right on the ground floor. I, I do think that Los Alamos got stuck in kind of two conflicting curves. One is the lab deciding to move into town, and the other is 
and this was some time ago, with small general merchandise stores closed nationwide. And that's what we had, and they closed. And they didn't close because we didn't shop there. There's no TGMY anywhere anymore. So those two things happened at the same time. But I really believe that the lab has kind of learned its lesson in terms of the town is a crucial fun factor in their recruitment ability. And they know that. And I've heard from any number of people who may or may not have a say-so in it who <coughs> seem to have a say-so in it at the lab who say, that was a mistake on our part and we need to not be doing that in the future. But I do think there are things we can do as a county, either between zoning or between actually having a delegation going and saying it to them officially, look, we need not to have offices down here. Of course, we have contractors there too. Okay, thanks. Is there another question? Where are the mics? Oh, right over here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then over there. Well, thank you all for running. Um, I have a two part question, if I may. The, the first is should the creation, uh, designation, preservation of open space be part of our economic development plan? And secondly, related to that, um, when Rendija County gets transferred to the county, what would you like to see done or not see done with Rendija? On the first part of the question, the answer is yes. We should make sure that we maintain open space. We don't want seas of parking lots and, and, and asphalt. Uh, we want we want a, a community that's balanced on those things. So the answer is yes, we should be considering that as we move forward. Uh, as far as uh, Rendia, Rendia Canyon, uh, you know, we, we sort of lost an, a lot, an opportunity, as Councillor Wismer and Councillor Rogers pointed out at the council meeting, about having a real nice uh, canyon front kind of uh, uh, businesses when, when we decided to go with, with Smiths and with that retail. So. Uh, I think it's another opportunity to look at trying to do that, to have a different way of looking at what we're doing and developing that area. Because there's a lot of, it'll be really nice area to, to for overlook, and, and that's another opportunity for us to look into that. Um, I'm, I think our open spaces are incredibly important, and uh, designation of open spaces is something that we're in favor of. Our open spaces are, are one of the things that make this community an incredibly wonderful place to live. Um, as far as, as Rendija Canyon goes, I don't have any personal um, ideas as to what should go there. I think that's something that should be done as a community. We as a community need to have that discussion. Um, we need to talk about, you know, how is that area important to us? Um, what are the sorts of things that we would like to see there? Um, and so I think it, it's the responsibility of the council to lead that discussion. But more importantly, it's the responsibility of the council to listen to the community itself. So um, that's, that's more a question, I think, that you need to ask all of us as a community, um, rather than just the, the council members. Thank you. So I grew up in Boulder, and so I know a lot about, you know, what was in the 70s when they were just starting the open space around the whole thing and on the one hand it's made it one of the most beautiful and desired communities on earth and also it's one of the most expensive and all of the all of the retail is outside of it and all people commute in and so I live in those issues through my parents constantly but we have I do think open space is important we are on what is it three little mesas and we already are surrounded by national forest, DOE land, land that can't be developed. So I think we have to be smart about it. We certainly should think about are there areas that we are in control of that we want to designate as open space. And we're obviously a community that's mostly here because we love the outdoor. So it's certainly something to look at. We just need to be careful on how we do it. And with, with Trinity High, I agree with Michael. I think it, this is a community thing. We need to talk about it as a community and decide as a community. Thank you. I think that's a great question. Uh, earlier I had spoken, I uh, was a proponent of our economic vitality plan. And uh, in that plan, number three is quality of life. And quality of life for somebody who lives in Los Alamos is you have
have to have space. You have to, that's why we're here. Uh, there's plenty to develop first before we would uh, send bulldozers down to Rendia. We've got A19 and A8 to go first for our new houses that we need to move top speed. Um, so, I'll let I don't anticipate any development of Randia Canyon anytime soon. Open space is a, an important value to us, but what I'm interested in is balance between open space and development where we need it. I think we have a lot of young people and a lot of older people who would actually rather move in, move downtown to, to smaller places. Uh, that, I think, would help make our downtowns more vibrant. We could add a, a, a thousand or two thousand people to this community. There's seven thousand commuting to the jobs at the lab and we're leaving the county every day. If the housing is available and uh, the key need is starter housing. The last real starter housing tract that was built here was Broadview where I live on North Mesa. There's room there to do another one. There's certainly room downtown to do a higher density housing, including live work. So there's potential for that. One of the three elements that makes Los Alamos special is the natural environment that surrounds our community. And that's why, as county councilor, I voted to support initiatives to improve our trails, our parks, and our recreational <coughs> facilities. And I feel that we have to continue to make investments in these areas so that mountain bikers and rock climbers and sports enthusiasts and tourists will want to come here and enjoy the beauty of this county together with us. As far as Rendilla Canyon, it is a natural wonder and I am not in favor of developing it. I think we should leave it and preserve it as it is so that our citizens can enjoy it and, and people that come here to visit us can enjoy it as well. And there's a great potential there, and the county has to be a good steward of that land and make sure that all of the cultural sites are properly registered and that it's preserved and maintained. Yes, sir. Is it? Yeah. I have a mic. So, I am. Could you bring it up? Well, no, I, I wanted to ask a question. That okay. <laughs> so, Pete, Pete touched on this, and I'd like to hear the other candidates' thoughts on affordable housing because that is directly coupled to the development of retail because those employees will not make land on salaries, I guarantee. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on affordable housing. seniors. 
I would like to see something like the Oppenheimer Apartments be built in White Rock using some of the land of A19. Uh, by having more amenities uh, in White Rock, we can promote our community as a retirement area of choice. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why, as county councilor, I voted uh, to improve and renovate our senior center in White Rock so that we'll have a kitchen that will provide hot meals for our seniors. I think there's a real need for this kind of uh, housing for our seniors with amenities, and that can fall under affordable housing. Affordable housing um, is clearly needed, but it's not something the county can do by itself. What we can do is create conditions where uh, developers can see a profit. That may mean we have to, to go ahead and, and put some infrastructure in, uh, but anytime you're doing public-private um, arrangements, you have to be very careful. Uh, you have to get a commitment, just like we, we spent a lot of money on the Trinity site. We think Smith's is going to finally come in with their money. I'd like to work it a little faster and get get more of a commitment up front. Uh, we definitely need it. It'll help this town, but we have to go carefully uh, with the public's money. So I live next door to what I think may be the last uh, development in town that had affordable housing in it. That's the Pinyon Trails development uh, in White Rock. And that was built on the school's property for the, the for the middle school, we were saving that patch. And what happened is all of the affordable housing lots have houses sitting on them, and there's still empty lots down there, so the developer didn't make any money. So we have to be real careful about the A19 moving forward. It's not to say that we can't do it, and we can have more density of things, uh, rentals or the smaller condo type things, uh, units. We lived in townhouses that had affordable housing in them when we were in Maryland. So we do have to do it. We have a plan. We're part of the Santa Fe uh, Regional Housing Development that, uh, uh, where this can be worked together because we have to belong to something to go after these uh, Section 8 vouchers. I think affordable housing is incredibly important, um, particularly for people like myself, um, as well as some of our older citizens. Um, Unfortunately, one of the, the ways affordability of housing is measured is actually based on median income. And we have an incredibly high median income here, so that sort of skews um, what's considered affordable housing. So some of the, the older um, affordable, so-called affordable housing developments aren't truly affordable for the people that need it to be affordable. I think there's some alternatives. We need to look at ways to, for example, um, incentivize perhaps a land trust or some other um, alternative method of making truly affordable housing. Um, there are options out there and, and it's something that we definitely need, need to look at. Ken, as a, as a county, uh, we've seen what happened where the new municipal building is going. There used to be a lot of rentals right in there too and they're all gone. So uh, affordable housing to people often means you know, a cheaper purchase per house, but as we've heard today, it also means rental, lease, other options that are that are that are affordable for people. Uh, and and for those who live here, it's kind of tough to find that. So we have land transfers happening. We have opportunities now, and and the county can create incentives, tax incentives, other things for developers to find a way to make money simultaneously while simultaneously trying to provide those opportunities for people. Uh, so, so we need rental, uh, we need it for, for an incoming workforce as we try to diversify, we have to think about that in the future, these things are linked. So we have some land opportunities, I think it's time to take advantage of that, incentivize developers to provide what we're looking for, for affordable housing, for all ages and all workforce. Uh, and uh, that's something that we owe as we move forward. It's been given a lot of uh, promise and lip service, but now I think it's time to do it. Which indicates that in 30 to 50 years, we'll be living in the desert here on our current trajectory. And 
if so, do you think the council should focus more attention and perhaps more funding on our currently already good sustainability program? So there's been a lot of work going on out of our environmental department on our sustainability plan. And I think just now recently the, the public utilities has to add what they're doing, what their goals are going to be for electric and water. And this is all then going to come together. Uh, we're going to go to the sustainability board and then we're going to get public comment and get to see it. So uh, yes, absolutely, we need to keep pushing. You know, I think we're way ahead in recycling. Uh, we, we're just we're just so lucky on this PV uh, netto activity. Uh, our our uh, counselors from 20 years ago or 25 years ago that pushed for the hydros. Uh, we didn't realize how smart a deal that was, and we own our own utilities, so we can affect stuff right away. So uh, I think we're on that path already, and I look forward to seeing the sustainability plan here in the future and see what other cool things we can do. There's there's other things in there. We, we are a, a good community for sustainability and renewable energy. I'm proud of that. Uh, the science is there. Global warming is a reality. We need to deal with it. That's, it's not a disaster, but there are changes coming. One of the key changes that's going to happen to New Mexico is water. Uh, uh, a few degrees. I mean, a, a huge loss of water resources. We're very fortunate in this, in this county to have groundwater and this San Juan project uh, rights to, to water. Uh, so we should certainly exercise um, our rights under that. And we, we have more water rights at the moment than uh, we need. In the future, that may change. So we need to be careful ready to take advantage of it. It's a fact uh, that the Earth's temperatures are rising. Uh, global warming exists. Uh, to what extent human activities influence that is not clear at this point. Uh, but I would say in Los Alamos County, we have a very good program for sustainability. Uh, but I would like to see us make more investments. And one thing that comes to mind is to extend our Canyon Rim Trail so that it goes from the existing area all the way to Diamond Drive and the Medical Center so that pedestrians and bicyclists can have a safe path to get into our downtown. And we should encourage other modes of transportation uh, besides automobile traffic. And for this reason, this is why I've been a strong supporter of Atomic City Transit and keeping our bus service free so that all of our citizens that are teenagers that need to get to after school activities and our seniors can take advantage of, of this service. Uh, we've made tremendous progress uh, with our utilities. Uh, many of which are not going to be foreseeable. Um, so I think we really need to, to pursue the very admirable um, environmental sustainability goals of the county and expand upon them. Um, there are a wide range of things that we can do um, from alternate transportation, as, as uh, Vincent mentioned, or, you know, there are things with the way we deal with stormwater that I think that we can improve uh, our uh, water supplies, not just the water supplies that we rely on, but those downstream of us as well. Um, you know, there are, are alternate energy um, systems that we can do. I would really love to see all of the, the capital improvement projects that are going on um, in town. I'd love to see them utilizing active and passive systems. I, I told you I've been in leadership Los Alamos a long time, and I've been at the uh, at the Valley Caldera for the environmental session eight times, and I, we've had a point counterpoint every time about global warming, about the science saying yes and the science saying no. So, uh, where do I sit on that right now? I think that there's something there. Uh, we can't ignore it. We have to analyze and, and see, see where we are with it. So it's, it's uh, I'm not going to say we're as far as any convenient truth, but we certainly are, we have something that we have to deal with. Uh, the county can do a lot of things to help. I mean, citizens can do their own individual uh, county-sponsored programs for recycling and, and so forth. 
We also, as we incentivize new business and current business, we can incentivize them to meet environmental standards, environmental quality standards, and be sustainable. We can also do that through our CIP projects. You know, a condition of going forward on a CIP project is you're going to meet environmental sustainability goals for the, for the, uh, the county. So uh, moving forward, we can really put a dent in those kind of things. So the answer is yes, we can really work on that. Yes, I do think global warming is happening. Um, I think when I heard so much on the news that maybe it's not, we're fortunate in this community, you can just be chatting with your friends who are scientists researching these things. So I've, I randomly just bought check a few. And so far, consistently, everyone firmly believes. But in my own reading, I, I do think that that's happening. And I do think we need to be aware of it. And I do, in some ways, there's, it's, there's not a lot we can do to stop it just here in our town, but there's certainly ways we can do to, things we can do to try to make it not as bad on us as it could otherwise be. So that includes environmental sustainability, that includes keeping track of what our water rights are and utilizing them, and frankly being aware of, of our place within the broader community, not being aggressive about that. We're all going to be dealing with this together. Um, and also, I think, dealing with our upcoming projects, what kinds of Things can we put on them to make sure that they are more environmentally sustainable? Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, so as a younger member of, our, of the community, I really want to put it to all of you, and Michael kind of said a little bit about this earlier, what can the council do to help encourage younger uh, people to stay in the community or to join the community? I mean, besides affordable housing, that one's you already touched, but what else could the council do? I, I think one of the big issues is um, the lack of retail. That's a huge issue for, for many people. but. Another part of it is cultural. Um, I'm speaking to a lot of people my age. Um, there are, are things about this community that, um, and they're changing, but that have been lacking in the past. Um, you know, one of the things is uh, the, the summer concert series is something that has, has really helped revitalize this community. And so those sorts of, of cultural activities, I think, um, in addition to affordable housing and providing good retail, um, is, is something that we can really do to, to help bring and keep those people. Um, and, you know, there are, are things that we can do to, to incentivize that. One of the things is, according to the zoning in this town, it's technically illegal to have a microbrewery. You can't brew beer and serve it in the same building, so. <laughs> okay, how do feel about that one? Uh, I think uh, there are a lot of things we can do. I mean, we talked about some retail opportunities. People like exciting retail. And, and we can also really invest in UNMLA to make sure that UNMLA is a, is a place to go to school. Uh, that's, that, that's, a, that's a great uh, great institution. I have an associate's degree from there. In fact, Ken taught me class once. Uh, where's Ken? Uh, uh, many years ago. Uh, I, that, that's, that's attractive to, to younger folks. Uh, affordable housing is going to be an important one. I know we talked about it, but it's really important. Uh, so, those are a couple of things we can do, uh, targeting that age group, I, I'm assuming that's a little bit older than teen and younger than me, I guess is what you mean, uh, so, uh, because I'm, I'm going to stay here, uh, but anyway, those are the kind of things that I, I'd be thinking of, I and mean, we hear about there's not a lot to do in town for, you know, teens, teen center, but the same is true for, for a little bit older folks, and all the way to the folks that are retired here, you know, they like to have things to do as well, so, anyway. Uh, education opportunities, more retail, uh, recreational activities are the things that we should target. I also think there's a fair amount of things we can do as a county government in terms of um, encouraging cooperation and in terms of our zoning and in terms of our planning. So absolutely we need more retail, we need a more vibrant downtown, we need a place that has more restaurants and bars. We start with that, with frankly just stop in our huge leakage off the hill. But also, as we make our plans for the developers who are going to maybe be building other buildings, and in partnering with people who come here, there's one in, there's a, a one right now that's coming and wants to take down some of the 
more decrepit parts of downtown and build something more lively that would have retail on the main level and um, housing up above. That's something as a county they would want us to invest 10% in. I would say that would probably be a good idea for us to revitalize the downtown along those lines. But there's lots of other things we can do. A lot of other cities have the trucks that come in on Friday in the day at lunch and they have all kinds of very gourmet lunches and we could coordinate that kind of thing. Right now there are those trucks in other towns and have them come up until our folks want to do it. Thanks. number one reason why we uh, young families want to live here in Los Alamos is the quality of our public school system. And for that reason, as county counselor, I've supported <coughs> county budget initiatives that will help our public schools lessen the costs that our public schools have to bear, uh, as well as helping UNMLA to expand their programs. But in addition to having a fine, quality public education, we also need to have amenities for our young families. And that's why, as county counselor, I voted for a teen center. I voted for a new library in White Rock. I voted for a nature center and Ashley Pond improvements so that our young families can have things to do and their children can have things to do after school and enjoy this community and this wonderful natural environment where we are. Uh, and something like a nature center celebrates the essence of this community and that's why I support it. So we've all said a more vibrant downtown uh, would would attract young people as well as, as older people. How do we get there? Uh, I, I talked with Peggy Durbin, the owner of Ottawa Bookstore, a, a few weeks ago. I told her about easing up on the sign code so that she could have had a, a sign out front of her, her uh, bookstore so people could see she's there. She was enthusiastic about that. We've recommended to the present county council this is something that, that is getting in the way of, of businesses surviving. So there are things, little things we have to do to make businesses survive. We've got these outdoor amenities. It's a great place to be. We need a little more business. The other thing we can do is enhance tourism. If we've got a thousand more people coming through every month, every business here is going to benefit. So if it's to attract and keep young families or, or our young people to stay, um, what I've seen is probably the best way that we can encourage them or, or entice them and incentivize them to stay is to have them go away. Because once they go away for a while, they find out how wonderful it is in the rest of the world, and then we're lucky enough that they get married and come back here, and then they're here to raise a family. And they're like my new friend over there that I'm running against county council. Where are the mics now? I've, I've got one of those. Um, my question for everybody, it sounds like it's three parts, but it isn't really. One is, I've heard economic development bandied around many times. I got four companies. We're trying to hire a thousand people and bring in a lot of money. And our question is, can we afford to stay here? And the answer at the moment is no, because to steal from Governor Romney, when you guys talk about economic development, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's not what I do every day. And that leads to subtraction, which is that I'll be I'll be done in a couple seconds if you stop interrupting me. Subtraction means jobs and money are leaving the county and not coming in, and that's bad. And then the last piece is guts, which is will any of you stand up to NNSA or county employees or the state to make this place successful? Jobs in Los Alamos County. We have a research park 
and the Entrada Business Park, and there's great potential there to fill those areas. There are new technologies such as uh, biofuels, algae-based biofuels. We gave $2 million grant to the New Mexico Consortium to help them get started. So that research, the cutting edge research, and the jobs that comes with it will be done in our county. And that's the kind of approach that I favor. The county has got to be an ally. The other area that we can help is to simplify our code so that a business, when it wants to expand, they know very succinctly what they need to do. So these are the areas. We have to be an ally for businesses. The, the research park and uh, activities are good, but there is a need for what my friend Rick Niebel, who has a startup com uh, company, calls an industrial slump. Low rent uh, space, and we have very little low rent lab, office, factory space. We have land. Over on DP Road, we have other tracts of land coming to us. Rick has suggested, get some transportables from the lab, set them up over there, call it the Los Alamos Business Trailer Park, and let the startups use it. Uh, it might be worth it. If, if existing landlords were willing to offer something of that kind, great. But if they're not, we can do it. That's the kind of thing the county can move in and offer. So, uh, cheers, Pete. You got two points. You hit really two good, great ideas tonight. The first one was the signage, you know, where the county could be, you know, uh, or be a service to our uh, businesses instead of an impediment. And then the other one was this great idea. We're going to have as soon as we get the big building done, we're going to have trailers that we can turn into this uh, low rent. And uh, we're going to have an area for this too, because eventually we're going to get the DP21 site when we get that all cleaned up. Um, the only other thing I was thinking maybe to add to this is uh, maybe it's time for us to be serious about the local, uh, a local preference ordinance and make it easier for some of our local builders. I mean, it's been very quiet around here building for a while, and we might have to do something here to help get that all fired up again with our local builders. It used to be vibrant local builders. You know, I think that in terms of economic development, we do have a lot of potential with spin-offs from the lab. Transfer seems like the most obvious thing that ought to be happening here. I think there's a couple of number of reasons why they don't. One is, the, I'm getting some funny looks, maybe I'm crazy about this, but I think, gee whiz, it seems like that's a good idea, but it could be that the types of people who want to be entrepreneurs are not the ones who are going to leave the lab, but it's their technology that might be leaving and could potentially be being worked on here. Um, I do think there's a good possibility to have some kinds of grants once in a while for some small businesses to start up here if we really believe that um, there's something they're going to be hiring on and bringing in a lot of people here. I do think, again, because you're using public money, we have to be pretty careful with that. There are VCs, and why couldn't we partner with others of those around New Mexico to have them come up and see the benefit of, of investing in our companies up here. So, yeah, I think we do need to think about it, but um, there's lots to look into. Thank you. Eric, you and I have talked about this a bunch. Uh, uh, in passing at many of Gordon's concert series. Uh, I, I, I really believe that we need, if we're going to have uh, diversification of success, especially our technology, which like what you're talking about, we need the county needs to provide incentives for that to be here. And, and even when they do come, they, they, as Eric was pointing out, they eventually leave for a number of reasons. Uh, there, there's not enough uh, uh, infrastructure for them, there's not enough uh, of things for them to do uh, when, when they're here. It's hard to attract people to come work and stay here. So those are things as a county that we can incentivize. So we can, you know, if somebody wants to develop our property, we can incentivize them to, to have preferential treatment, local, local notions. We can be connected to tech transfer. We can find a partnership with the laboratory to allow that to, to happen. There are a lot of people that go on entrepreneurial leave and try to start something in Los Alamos. We can incentivize that to, to be successful. So uh, as far as having the guts to stand up with MNSA, uh, that's a tough question, but the answer is, in, in my case, uh, I, I, have a, I have a good relationship with most at Lasso, the ones that I know, including a uh, working relationship with Kevin Smith when we have had a chance to work together. So, so on the county, we, we would work together on those things. 
I know that uh, when, when you talk about economic vitality, that's it's sort of an ambiguous thing. Um, from my standpoint, giving my background in planning, the best thing that I can think of to improve economic vitality in this town is to update the zoning codes. Um, they're outdated, they are, don't necessarily help small businesses in any ways they hinder them. Um, like the example I gave for it being illegal for there to be a microbrewery. Um, there are many other examples of, of similar issues, and I think that's what I can bring to the council uh, as far as improving the economic vitality. As for standing up to um, other groups, I, I believe that it is the job of the council to stand up for the county. Um, and you, know, you have to look after the interests of the county first. Um, and that's uh, what I plan to do if elected. Thank you. Um, we, we, can you hear me? Yeah, just talking to the antenna. Can you hear me? Yeah. We live in a one company town. Is our county in good financial condition? And what ought it be doing to uh, prepare to deal with the possibility of years of downsizing of our one company town? Kristen. Uh, so, uh, okay, I hope to start my two minutes over. Uh, anyway, the first thing I'll say is I didn't get to say it in the last one. Who remembers when this town had Lada, EG&G, and, uh, and had, had companies like that when they used to be here? Remember that? When Craig was here? So they're, they're, we, we can have other companies here if we do it right. So that's the first thing I'll say. So we do have what I've called the 800 pound gorilla across the bridge that we have to have a focus on. And our economic development activities, is that's the prime goal. Uh, but what, I'm, what I'll say, George, is that we need to work together with Los Alamos to understand what's coming in the future. Because, you know, we, as Los Alamos changes, it impacts the county tremendously, including home values and, and all the things we want to do. If Lionel dips by just a little bit, it can cause a lot of problems. So for us to be successful, George, we, we need to be looking, partnering with them in, into the future and be able to predict with them what's going to go on. I know what things in Washington can be unsettling, but as best we can, we need to be predicted. Uh, do, do we have a big GRT revenue stream? Yeah. Is it going to get smaller? Yes. So we just need to be able to, and agile to adjust to that. I think it's hard when it's a one horse town, but it is what it is. I think that. Um, I've been doing a lot of these little meetings where I try to meet a lot of people and I, I had someone there who told me he's working on the 50-year plan for the lab. So I don't feel like it's eminently greatly going away. Obviously it has its ups and downs. And frankly, an interesting thing about the two, the last two voluntary separations I know from studying the numbers at REMAX, in fact it doesn't lower our housing prices. Our main lowered housing price, we did have it with the fear of the drop, but then it was really the 2008 financial crash that dropped our prices. They did drop 20%, but with the second BSP, they didn't even drop because statistically we don't move away when we retire. We stay. In fact, what it does is <laughs> tightens up the real estate market. But nonetheless, we do have to plan ahead in terms of not overspending and not over planning for more people. If the lab is going to be cutting back, we don't want to be spending the GRT money that we're not having. So we certainly have to be cautious about that and thoughtful about that as we plan ahead. Yes, we are currently flush with money. Well, not quite flush, but the county has a lot of money at the moment. Um, is it a risk that most of that money comes because of the lab, and yes. So I think one of the things that we need to really look at is diversification. Diversification of our economy as a whole, um, looking at other businesses um, other than just the lab. But also, I think we need to lobby for diversification of the mission of the lab. Um, it's, it's something, you know, I think the, the expertise that we have there um, can be used in a, in a wide variety of ways. And if we diversify that mission, I think we can help strengthen um, the, the, the lab's position as far as remaining a strong um, uh, economic driver in, in our community. Um, given that though, I think our, one of the most important things we can do as a community is to diversify the other kinds of businesses that we have here. Yes, the, uh, okay. 
Yes, the uh, county finances are solvent. They're probably the strongest they've been ever. I remember when we had uh, no CIP money, um, and you know we could barely provide some of the services. Everything was volunteers for parks and recreation. So compared to that, uh, yes, we have a lot more resources. Uh, back then, it was a one-company town also. Okay, so it's been a one-company town since uh, 1943, since it's been opened up. Uh, the wonderful thing about the laboratory is it does some unique national security capabilities that do not happen anywhere else in the world. So there is some, there is some kernel of things that will always have the need here. And I'm looking forward to not too far off in the, in the future where we're going to be able to start hiring again and hiring with a vengeance as we go through a uh, demographic uh, change at the lab. There are a lot of small towns in Colorado, in the, uh, the mountains of Colorado, that don't have the $2 billion payroll we have, and yet have vibrant downtowns, are fun places to live. Uh, I mentioned we have a lot of things to offer similar to that. We could get more tourists coming up here. I'm not saying make us into Vail, but a stream of tourists enjoying the things we have will help our downtown. Uh, we have spin-off of the lab. We got a lot of talented people, uh, people like myself who took early retirement. We're, we're interested in, in startup companies and, and new technologies. So we need to diversify. We can help our local economy with tourism. Uh, but Underlying it all, if we face big budget cuts, we have to look at priorities, have a clear consensus, and the most important things get done, the rest wait. I don't subscribe to the philosophy that if we have the money, we should spend it. I think the most important job of a, of a county councilor is to hold the line on county spending uh, and hold the line on our budget items. That's why when the budget uh, for the visitor center in White Rock was proposed to be increased by a million dollars, I voted against it. We need to stay within our budgets. Uh, having a, more, a smarter, more efficient government doesn't necessarily mean having a larger county government. I think we've got to control the size of our county government. And finally, we've got to recognize that the health of our county is intimately tied with the health of the laboratory. And the worst thing we can do right now is contemplate raising the GRT tax rate because that will hurt the laboratory and that, I believe, will cost us jobs. And I don't want to see that happen and I'm opposed to that. Okay, it's time. I'm sorry, there's not time for more questions. I have a round of questions. Uh, it's time for closing statements now. Each candidate gets one minute. We'll begin with Mr. Gordon. So, um, I remember 30 years ago when it was all volunteer, I'm the only candidate from White Rock. Uh, my day job is to listen. I listen to trade studies, cost benefits, capability impacts, but then I have to decide. And then I have to execute. Then I have to figure out what to do. Take the battery. Uh, we all want to. We all want to support the schools. I've just finished a four-year term on the school board. I think I understand the school finances. I understand the difference between operating in the capital issues. And we have capital issues. Okay. Well, we have issues on both sides. We can't chase the lab out because they're renting school properties. That's the best income we have. So we have to be very careful swinging these swords because they have two edges. Um, and in closing, I'd probably just want to say that uh, I'm an engineer by trade with limited analysis capacity, 90%, then I have to move on and do something. People are concerned about getting good value for all the money the county spends, about how we could make our town more inviting to everyone single people to families with children to retired people. 
We need to focus on communication, prioritization, fiscal responsibility, and sustainability. Communication is just talking and listening to people about the issues and choices we have. That's how we will develop consistent priorities. I think we have priorities pretty clear. Public safety, infrastructure, education, and economic development. If we manage these things well, then we'll be able to afford to further develop our recreational amenities. Fiscal responsibility and sustainability are just using all our resources wisely. We can afford all the important things for our community as long as we prioritize. Thank you. My approach uh, to county government is one that emphasizes principles above politics. I'm not afraid to be in the minority position when the minority position is the right position for our citizens. And that's why as county councilor, I refused to dismiss the LAGRI petition that was signed by 2,000 citizens even though there was a legal controversy. Because I feel that the county council should abide by the charter and allow the vote and let the courts decide what's legal. When uh, the council imposed an unfair contract on our firefighters, I stood with our firefighters. So I'm not afraid to cross party lines and do the right thing. Now more than ever, we need a county councilor who's going to be an independent thinker and is going to work with uh, everyone on the council to achieve our goals. I'm running again for re-election so that we can put working people and families first. And I ask for your vote on November 6th so I can serve another term as your county councilor and together we can put principles ahead of politics. So I've heard that it's hard to distinguish between the six of us, so I'm going to try to make a little distinguishment for myself, despite the in, in addition to the obvious. So <laughs> one is that I am literally running on saying these positions are at large. The counselors need to take into account everybody who's in town, not just the people who show up. They absolutely need to be heard, but all of us, even those who can't. So those who'd like some progress in town and the families in town. Um, secondly, I am an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur, and I've worked at those kind of companies in the past, and I can help bring that kind of understanding to council. Third, I have a wonderful understanding of our real estate needs in depth. I can, we can come up with lots of nice solutions I think that can help. And fourth, with a law degree, I'm a highly analytical person. In most jobs I've had, I've had to listen to a wide variety of people who don't get along and try to figure out where the commonality is and find the best ways to move forward. And that's the kind of perspective that I would bring to council. Um, and there it is. Thank you very much. I ask for your vote November 6th. I want to help move Los Alamos forward. Uh, I have the, the credential and the leadership ability to do that. Uh, I will promise you that when elected, I won't stop campaigning. I will still solicit the input of, of, of everyone in the town for whatever we do as we move forward. Uh, it won't stop the day that the, all the ballots are in. Uh, I, I'm, committed, I'm committed to helping the schools. I, 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 and all kind of create activities to help that move forward. Uh, I mentioned I want economic vitality in this town to keep everybody Happy. And we all want to live and we want to stay here and have an exciting place to live. Uh, I, all of my uh, life and all of my decisions uh, will be based on a strong set of core values which we all hold dear. And, and that's something I can promise all of you on a daily basis that will be a guiding principle for me and representing all of you. It, you know, and as a taxpayer myself, I, I pay taxes too. Uh, and I share in that and I have to hold, be a good steward of your dollars no matter what we decide. Uh, as we all decide together. So I look forward to your vote uh, on November 6th, and please look at my new website, playforcouncil.com. This came up yesterday. Thank you. All right, thank you. I, I believe that the job of a county councilor is to represent the county. And since uh, it is an elected position, elected at large, you have to, to represent the county as a whole. Um, and I'm committed to doing just that. Um, to differentiate myself a little bit, um, as, as uh, Kristen hinted that I guess we need to do, um, I feel that you know, given the fact that we are currently um, flush with cash, I would rather see us invest that money wisely in infrastructure um, that will help pay off 
um, in the future that will give us benefits later on down the line, rather than letting that money sit in a bank account where someone like Bernie Madoff can run away with it. Um, the, I understand the importance of, of, of having a reserve of cash. I don't want to spend it all, all at once, but um, I, I believe it's really important to look very closely at the sorts of things that uh, will help this community into the future. Thank you. Okay, can we give the candidates a big hand?